Hey everyone, it's Dave here with davidspassage.com. We're continuing in our wild edibles series. Today we're looking at cattail, but don't tune out just yet. I know you're thinking, boy, everybody knows cattail's edible. I'm hoping to take this video a step further, so stick around. So let's look a little bit closer at the plant and let's talk about a few ways that you can enjoy it. I'm not gonna just tell you about it. I'm actually gonna show you a couple things that you can do to enjoy this plant. So cattail is gonna grow in areas with water for the most part, along roadsides too and some ditches, but they really have to have a lot of water in order to survive. So the most part, for the most part, you're gonna find them in lakes and along the edges of lakes and that sort of thing. Cattail is super easy to identify. First of all, you're looking for these tall leaf Clusters growing right up out of the ground. The leaves are just one long, smooth leaf pointed at the top. And as they go down, they get lighter and lighter in color until you get to sort of a white base. Another thing you're looking out for when you're looking for cattail are those very characteristic brown hot dogs sticking up out of the top. So first of all, in the springtime, on the roots, you're gonna find these uh, pointy looking sprouts. These are dormant sprouts and they will grow at the end of roots here. You can kind of see. There's one right there, one right there. These can be eaten raw or cooked. I'm just gonna take the sprouts off and set those to the side for right now. Another thing we can do is we can take the roots off. Look at the cross section of the root. Very starchy, it's a very starchy vegetable. We'll cook that up and use that as sort of a potato substitute. And the roots are very stringy, so a lot of times you gotta cook them and then you wanna pound the starch out in order for them to be any good. The best part of the cattail I find is the part that is, and this is the most easiest to consume, part that starts here and kinda goes up to here. I guess the base of the leaf stalk, you cut into that. And all you do is you peel away these leaves and inside is this white core. If you get these early on in the season and you peel away all these stringy outer leaf parts, what you find in the middle is a very, very tender and juicy vegetable. One thing I will mention as you peel away these leaves, one of the things that you're gonna discover is you're gonna discover on the inside of a jelly-like substance. Boy, it's like this jelly stuff that grows. I don't know if you can see that or not feels just like aloe vera and you can use it for the exact same thing. It's got a nice cooling effect to it just like aloe vera does. One thing I will say about it though is when you use it for treating sunburns, it, and I guess aloe vera does this too, but it builds up and it does get kind of sticky. The other part that's edible are from the very tops. The very top of the plant, you can see there's actually two parts. You know, those, those turn into those little, uh, um, the little hot dog things that you can light on fire or, you know, whatever. <laughs> And uh, this is where the pollen is developed. If you find them young enough, you can peel back to kind of expose the corm of the plant. Right there. It's kind of like peeling back corn on the cob. And these are edible. Tastes similar to corn. These are, those are those inner cores I was telling you about. You can eat them raw. It's a little hard to explain their texture. Almost almost like a, a not, not a very dense mushroom. It tastes kind of like a cucumber. Here's one of those little uh, root spikes. Here's one of those little root spikes. I'm just gonna take that and peel the outer layer off. I kind of rinse it off in some clean water here. Similar taste to those cores. Man, I, I just want to say cucumber is sort of the closest um, descriptor to that flavor. Oh, there's one last way that you can eat these I'm really excited about. Uh, probably the favorite way to, to cook them if you've got the time to, to harvest them like this. And that is to harvest the pollen and use it to make pancakes. As the cattail is about to pollinate, what happens is the top flowery part develops this yellow powder on it. It's the pollen. And what I, what I like to do is you just take a sports drink bottle. This is a Gatorade bottle. Take the cattail, bend it over, stick it inside of the mouth of the bottle, and give it a, give it a real good shake. 
after a while, what you get is some of this. That's cattail pollen. And it can be used as a flour substitute. It's gluten free. So, if any of you guys are on a gluten free diet, um, there is no gluten in cattail pollen. And we're going to make a pancake with it. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use an egg, just to kind of as a binding agent in my cattail pollen. Just sort of dump it on there. Crack that on the side there. I'm going to add a little bit of water to that just to thin that out because I want it to be the consistency of pancakes. You see now I've got my alcohol stove. Got a little vial. This is just vegetable oil. Get that stove going. Okay. It's basically just to keep it from sticking. All right, now that my oil is preheated, Starting to look good. Starting to smell good too. Once the edges kind of get, you can kind of tell the edges are done. You can kind of come up underneath and flip it. Ready to flip it here. There we go. I'm thinking that one's done. Let's do another one. So we are all done. Two beautiful pancakes and a lot more to spare if I wanted some more. Here's the real test. My buddy Al's maple syrup. My friend Al makes it for me every year. A friend of mine from church. And, ha ha ha, some wild harvested mulberries. Let's see how this stuff is. That is a food worth foraging for, right there, man. Mmm. Wow. That is so good. Excuse me while I pick out on this a bit. Those mulberries really add a lot to it, too. Boy. It tastes like, like pancakes. I mean, that's basically what it is. But it's gluten-free, so... For any of you guys that are gluten intolerant, go harvest yourself some cattail pollen. Mmm. Well, that is the best part of the cattail. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Appreciate you guys tagging along with me as I get a little crazy with cattail. You know, cattail is a, a really useful plant. You can eat the, almost the entire thing, but be looking out for it. And if you can get some of these pollen pancakes, you're going to be one happy camper. Thank you guys so much for tagging along. Appreciate all your comments and support. And we'll see you in the next video, or we'll see you outdoors. Take care.